So do you have any social media superstars in your network? We've got a gentleman who's just joined us in WA called Paul Tonich. Mm -hmm. um, what he's doing on social media is amazing. Um, he, I think he does something like he um, gives a car away every year to his clients. Wow. So he gets them in this sort of zone of keeping in touch via his social media. Then he gives a car away at the end of the year. Um, <clears throat> ben Collier, his things are amazing. We've got Danny Grant and um, Rick Woodward have done some very clever things. They really worked to Halloween, changed all the signboards. The I agents saw that one. Did you see that Actually, one? Yes. Um, that got huge momentum. So they've done that in the last couple of years. And they're also doing this um, one's tall, one short. Okay. And they have this joke thing going and at their open houses, they do very clever things like beware agent 10 metres away and all this. <laughs> and they put that on social media. Yeah. And they've made a, and, and their community in the lower North Shore has responded in spades to that. And it's great um, because through, you know, advertising, yeah. like you can really hone in on your absolutely. patch. You know, yeah. you can ring fence it. No, absolutely. Well. And um, uh, Brad Gillespie, Ben Collier are two that have cleverly um, adding value. So they're just saying, you know, uh, Brad did something in Erskineville. Uh, he raised money for the local school there. And so he did that through his social media, through his clients. That was called Erco Berserko for Erskineville. Um, Ben's always putting sub suburb stats out, like what happened in this suburb, what's mm -hmm. happening around Paddington Wallara. Yeah. So people will click on that because what shop, what's the new shops that are opening? What, um, you know, what's the record price in the area? Um, same with, yeah, so I would say that sort of group of people, and there's a lot more in our group, I probably will shoot me later when they watch this for not mentioning them, but um, mm -hmm. I think those four to me and five stand out pretty quickly. So it's really interesting that um, you've got to be part entertainer, part, you know, comedian, and there's a lot of people with really fun personalities in the real estate industry. And to, you know, see that come through social media is, is makes, you know, a different impression of, um, you know, what people yeah. are traditionally known for. Absolutely. I think it's, you've got to make it fun. Um, we, we are in this industry, um, six, six day, it's a six day a week job, in some instances, seven day a week. You're getting calls all the time. So if you, and, and to stand out, all you need to do is just do something a little bit different. Yeah. Like what uh, Danny Grant and uh, Rick Woodward have done with the uh, Halloween, that stood out miles for them. I got a lot of comments on it personally, um, how clever they were around it. And then their way they're just doing a sale, like, you know, it's a short and tall sort of agent working together and they brilliantly work together um, and put a bit of humour into it. Yeah. So that makes people want to do business with you. And you've got to have a bit of humour dealing with the general public Not just a well. boring person putting up a sold sticker. People, that doesn't, it's not adding value to anyone. Yeah, it doesn't resonate. So you've got to stand out, put your personality on yeah, the line. If, if think about this, if you actually put a sold sticker up, then interviewed the buyer about the experience they've had, mm -hmm. interviewed the seller about the experience they had, then did some stats on the market that weekend then put it out. Now that's better than going sold, cracking a bottle of champagne. Yeah. Because that's just going to get passed, I think. It's the same time you're going to use to do it. You might as well just say, hey, just so you know, this weekend we sold this one, but the clearance rate in our market this weekend was 64% and the highest price in Coogee was 1.2 million for a unit down near the beach. Yeah. Bang. So VPA, which I always thought was visible panty. Uh, <laughs> no, oh, that's right. It's uh, <laughs> vendor paid advertising. I, so should social media be in the mix? I, that word VPA, I just don't like it at all. <laughs> I, I don't know why it's something we have to score agents, agencies score their agents on, do they get VPA? I just, I like say to them when I'm coaching our agents, Mel, it's like, if you think the owner should advertise, or you can say if you should get, you know, you should, if you think that's the right thing for their property, after you've spoken to them, you've seen what they need and what their wants are. People, sometimes people don't want people in their house. Yep. They want an off market. So if you think that's the right thing, well, you should give them some stats around your last clients that were happy with that. Um, if they don't want to advertise, they want to spend one dollar and you want to be their agent and they want you, well, you don't be pushing them. You give them what they want. It might be just a couple of photos. It might be a soft sell on social, mm -hmm. whether it's Facebook. Um, kind of paid advertising pa on Facebook. Yeah, it doesn't have to be vendor paid advertising. If, if the vendor, so I have sat with owners before and I've said to them, 
um, look, how do you want to do this? And they've said, look, we want to tell every, it's our biggest asset. Mm -hmm. We want it every, we want it in the Sing Tao, you know, we want it in the Chinese Herald, we want it in the Jewish news, we want it everywhere and just give us the best campaign. Yeah. Then I've gone to other owners and they've said, look, we just want to, uh, and now if you've got any buyers left over from that one you sold around the corner. Mm -hmm. um, so pushing or coercing a vendor to do something because a real estate wants to do it, I think that's not, the, that's, that's finished those days, in my personal opinion. You've got to um, diagnose before you prescribe with the vendors. Yeah. So if some of them will say, sometimes I'll walk in and I'll go, look, I know I need to be on realestate.com and domain.com. Um, we know that's where we want to be and we know we've got to do photos and we know we've got to style it. Mm -hmm. So I'd actually vendor actually say that to me yesterday. So they've um, taken that information from the internet, they're educating themselves yep, before telling me they what come they need to, to the do. agent. Yep. Yeah. And, and I get I get a lot of vendors come to me directly and I get um, property developers. Yep. I mean, I, can't, I don't work directly with vendors, but it's like they're asking for you know, for more advertising online. They, they know that Google is a great tool. They know that yes. Facebook is a great tool. Um, they see ads popping up and they want to know what, how, how they can get there as yes. well. Yes, and I, I, you, to answer your actual question before, socials, I think definitely, it, it has to be part. Now, whether that's um, you do your normal campaigns, then you launch it through your own database as an agent if you're building, if you've built that up, which you should have on LinkedIn, Facebook, so forth. So, and I'm seeing a lot of sales being affected off these social media platforms now. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't think that's a threat to the REAs and the domains and all that. They're, everyone's got a place. Yeah, a um, share of wallet. It, so there's it, lots it, of you know, yeah, exactly places right. that you need to be to um, make sure you've you know, t overturned every stone. That's it. And the old humble forgotten about signboard is probably still one of the best marketing mediums out there. Yep. I've sold plenty of properties off signboards before. Because what happens, people come to the area and have a drive around. They see, if, if you, you go to a new area and you want to buy a property, first thing you do is you drive the streets. Well, the next thing you do is you look at the si who's got the signboards and you ring that agency up because they've probably got more choice. Yep. That's probably prior even, then digital comes on the back, then, then they go onto the internet. That's when they start to download floor plan. That's what's the beautiful thing about digital. Yep. Um, you, can, you couldn't do that you know, years ago when I started. We used to glue a photo, a, a, a um, instant photo on a A4 piece of paper with a glue stick <laughs> and do a typeset square and stick it to the ad and only be able to take 10 to the open because we could only get 10 photos printed. <laughs> So Hopefully those days, those days have gone. <laughs> yes. So, um, what do you think of mail cards? The DL cards, the mail cards. Are they have they seen their uh, day? Good. It's a, look. I think they're market specific. Um, in the certain, I think some of the more salubrious markets, people get offended. They got, you know, a lot of them have nannies and people out emptying their letter boxes. You're never going to get through to them anyway. Um, a lot of them have got no junk mail on their boxes these days. Um, a lot of people are really environmentally aware now, so they don't like stuff in their letterbox. Yeah. I think you really have to pick your marketplace. Yeah. Um, Even the government uh, no longer sends you anything in the yeah. mail. So, so it's I like the last I, man standing is a real what, estate agent you know what, in Mel, the mailbox. You're exactly right. It's probably the lazy person's way of connecting with the community. Um, I would personally, you've got a social media strategy. If you go past any bus stop or sit in any airport lounge, like I was telling you before, everyone's on their phone or iPad. Mm -hmm. So why don't you just try and find a way through that? That's going to be quicker to their than their letterbox. Yeah. The other thing is there's still a place, I feel, for we list a property, say we listed a property and we're in the Pacific here at Bondi. We've listed number unit number 201. There's still a place for going and just letting the neighbours know by face, yeah. here's a brochure. I've listed this property. I don't understand why agents don't do that. There's actually a reason you're knocking on someone's door. Yeah. Then just go down the street and around the street. It's a 10 minute exercise to push your profile and to help the owner sell the business. Yeah. And that's gonna get more of a cut through than it will late in the letterbox drop. True. So that's yeah, just my opinion. So digital doesn't replace face time no, and in no. person. But you can get to know the person through digital media, through videos. Absolutely. So you're a fan of videos. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Probably the biggest thing I'm a fan of, full stop, would be doing it, even if it's a three minute, two minute, one minute video mm -hmm. on anything, that's much better than just doing no video. What's the benefit to the agent? Um, I think they're going to get more, um, more cut through. Yep.
And video gets um, a lot more kind of lift in the algorithms as well. So uh, video is actually favoured over all other okay. forms yeah, of well. content. So we should like hang on to that and Absolutely. make use of that while yeah. you know while the Facebooks and you know the other platforms are giving us that benefit. And I think the cameras on these phones, and you tell me better than anyone, um, I think they're now good enough to actually, for an amateur person... Uh, don't tell Jake. <laughs> <laughs> no, it'll never beat the professional uh, lighting and everything, but I'm saying for a, two, for a, I'm saying for a 20 second or 30 second quick grab, yeah. um, I think for an amateur, yeah. for they're, the amateur behind the scenes. they're foolproof in a sense to just quickly do something. Yeah. Um, they're never going to replace you know, a professional doing it, but the thing is um, they're just foolproof. So why wouldn't you do it? Yeah. Why wouldn't you just do, if you're there at an auction, the hammer's going down, why wouldn't you just keep your hand on the thing and video it instead of um, photograph and then send it? The people want to see it. A photograph is a photograph, but a video tells, it was the old story, a picture tells a thousand words. Well, a video must tell what, a hundred thousand mm. words. <laughs> and it shows the story yeah. kind of as it plays and out. And it's more emotive. There's no emotive, there's less emotive connection, I guess, in a photo than there is on on a video, would you would you say that? Yeah. Oh, definitely, because you get to hear somebody's voice, you get yeah. to see their personality. Yeah. Like you said, that person was humble. Well, this agent I know got selected to sell a huge property off a video they posted, and they were interviewing their client. And the client didn't say they're the most amazing agent, they just thought their humble demeanour was so good, and the way that they approached it and was great, grateful for the sale, that they chose that, they called that agent, so I saw your video you did on social, come and sell my house. Nothing to do with the result or anything. Imagine if they just did a photo and put champagne up and done, wouldn't have, wouldn't have got that listing. No. So we've got to get over our barrier and over our fear mm. of putting ourselves in front of the camera. Absolutely. So thank you, Matt. Thanks for letting us come to your home in Bondi and hear about you, your team, and what you think of digital marketing. Thanks, Melanie. Welcome anytime. I hope I've added some value today.